This is the second video taking a look at two makeups that uh, were done for UMAE, which is the uh, United Makeup Artist Expo trade show in 2015. Um, the last video basically covered the sort of sculpting of the pieces and everything and making the cores. Um, and now we have the uh, the actual sculpts pretty much done. The face is done and the neck. I started on the neck, but what happened with the neck was I actually had a far more ambitious makeup in mind than my core would allow. So I only sculpted the neck so far down and then uh, I actually extended later on, which I'll show you later on we do. But you can see here the neck has uh, has been kind of roughed in and sculpted. Uh, I decided to smooth that all out a lot. Uh, so it's a lot more sort of soft. There isn't a lot more, uh, as much sort of scratchy linear detail in there. It's a bit more sort of soft and, and foldy. So um, so that neck sculpt did change. Um, so the first thing we're going to do basically is to uh, cut the uh, the sculpt into a, a number of pieces because I don't want this to be one big massive piece. It would be very hard to put on if it was just one big piece. So what I've done is I, I've decided to cut around the chin uh, to make the bottom lip and the chin a separate piece. Uh, and I'm using a, a scalpel there, and you can see that it's cut at a very sort of uh, uh, steep angle to make sure that the overlapping edges uh, are far more likely to sort of join up um, without leaving an obvious step. I've also cut around the bottom of where the, 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 jaw, the jaw is, where, around where the cheek meets the neck, around the jawline. And I've cut that on both sides too to separate where the face and the, uh, the neck uh, uh, pieces meet. And then the entire thing is uh, soaked in water overnight. I've put it in a bucket of water here and you can see that there's a, a piece of sponge in the forehead uh, between the forehead and the side of the bucket. And that's just to stop any damage you know, happen to the sculpt as the head is pressing against the side. Uh, I topped this water up so that it was as full as it could be and then basically left it overnight for the water to uh, reactivate the Scopas parting agent, which I put on the outside. Um, if you want to know more about the release agents, there's a bit more information in the show more button underneath uh, for releasing sculpts from plaster cores. So after the uh, the whole thing has been soaking overnight, the, the surface is reactivated. And here you can see I've been able to slide the chin off before and I can slide the neck off as well. And the neck is going to go onto a specially made core, which has been splayed out and extended at the sides to give me lots of working room and remove as many undercuts as possible. And you can see that the neck fits in that little nook quite nicely. Uh, it fits that shape exactly. And I just need to make sure I push from the middle outwards and push out all the air bubbles and try and get it to sit uh, so nice so I can extend the sculpt out and finish it off. And when you look at the uh, the outside of the piece, you can see actually the uh, the water that's gone inside and underneath the release agent. Those bubbles are basically like a kind of a skin, a slimy, slippery skin that's reactivated with water. And it shows you quite nicely just how effective this is as a, as a film that you can sculpt on and then later on reactivate with water and get your sculpts off of the plaster to, uh, to re retouch them on a different core. So with the face, uh, I've got to be very careful with the face, so I just kind of lever up both sides to help free them properly. And once I'm sure it's going to come off nicely, I can just lift it from the nose, pull the whole face away, and then pop that onto its own core as well. And you'll remember we modified the core to remove all the undercuts, so I got rid of the, the bottom lip and the chin on this one, and also the undercuts of the eyelids as well. So they are now sort of flatter planes, but everything else should line up perfectly. You can see the piece sits in there quite nicely. The other thing I've done is use a sponge to press down on the sculpt and make sure that the uh, sculpt is sitting on the core properly. And also by using a sponge, I'm not putting in fingerprints and dents for my fingernails in there. And it also helps to uh, absorb any water that may be underneath. So by using a sponge, it's doing double duty. It's actually soaking up water as well as preventing you from damaging your sculpt. And there you can see the uh, the sculpt is sitting on the on the core quite nicely. The only thing that really needs to be fixed up is the edges, and we may need to extend a little bit here and there just to make the uh, the edges blend in nicely. So to blend the edges in around the edge, I'm going to use like uh, little bits of plastiline and a, a tool, and just take the existing clay that's there and just push it out so that it extends over a slightly longer area. I've only come out about sort of uh, seven or eight millimeters further around these edges just to kind of push them out and make sure that there's a more gradual transition between the edge of the sculpt and the uh, the core. Here I'm showing you a couple of different ways. On one side I use like the, the steel ball ended tool to push the plastiline out uh, and on this side I'm actually going to drag it out using this kind of twisted brass loop tool which uh, again it kind of grabs some of the clay, pulls it across and uh, the, the gradual reduction and extension just means that there's a nice shift from one sort of mound from the plastiline into that of the face so it's a more natural looking transition 
and same on the underside of the lip. I can kind of get right inside that underside of the lip now because I've removed the bottom lip. I've got access in there and I can use a, a number of tools to gradually work it into sort of finer and finer detail until eventually I can push down my finger and smooth it out and, uh, and then I can start texturing. Obviously the texturing has got to happen back on the edges where I've blended out so using the same tools as before, the scratchy cloth and the uh, the clay shaper tool through plastic, I can start denting it, putting in skin pores and, and uh, various um, bumps and uh, irregularities that make it look more like normal skin. The chin is sitting on its own core as well. Here you can see the, the same kind of things happen. The, the top lip here has been removed and the nose has been removed in order to give access to the underside of that of that bottom lip so I can get right in there and finish off all my detail and I'm doing the same thing again with that ball tool I'm just pushing that clay out I'm not really adding much I'm just dragging it and extending it so the same volume of plastiline is being shared out over a slightly longer distance and the idea is basically that if you blend out the plasticine on both sides that have been cut then you're not really adding anything you're just extending them both and they should taper and fold and overlap each other quite nicely and you won't end up with a radically different or noticeable um, edge between the two pieces here I'm just kind of carving in a little bit more detail here I just wanted to put a bit more of a, a hollow in that shape now it occurred to me that blending this out just in this corner here wasn't quite enough so I've actually extended it out just a little bit on the uh, the bottom lip just so that when this chin and bottom lip piece is on there is actually a slightly longer piece underneath the chin is actually going to go on before the face piece so by extending it out slightly on here I just give a, a slightly larger surface area for that lip to be glued onto and it just makes it a bit more secure so that when the face is being used and the mouth is you know acting and, and stretching that there's a, a big sort of lip of uh, silicon that comes out beyond where the lip is to the side so that it's really well anchored to the face because what can often happen with lip pieces especially if they're quite thick is that that sudden thickness of silicon even if it's very soft can't quite keep up with the stretch of the skin and it can kind of give way a bit so by extending it slightly here we're actually uh, increasing the surface area near where it's going to be uh, more likely to pop up and mouth corners are almost always a pain in the ass they always sort of give and flake out or stretch or crack or something because the mouth is used so much you know for drinking and smoking and eating and and everything so there's always these kind of hazardous things around uh, edges near the mouth that are always going to give you trouble so here you can see where the uh, the edge has been extended out slightly and it's all been textured up and that's now ready to uh, ground up and mold same with the uh, the face that's all been done and the edges have been cleaned up so that sculpt is now finished um, the only thing to do now is to do the uh, cutting edge and the overflow and everything which I'm going to do with plastiline here and it, I've done this in other videos before where I just basically explain how you do your cutting edge and the uh, the blend if you're interested in that check out the video I've done on this um, it's on my YouTube channel here and basically um, just look for the uh, the name of this video and you'll see uh, a far more detailed uh, description of, of what this process is and why it happens so uh, you may notice there as well there were some sections on the side where there was like a big sheets of uh, plastiline and the, the way I did this was to use a, uh, a pasta machine for rolling out sheets of pasta and it has all kinds of different uh, cutter sizes for different sort of ribbons and strips of pasta but I don't use any of those I just use the flat rollers to create a sheet of, uh, of plastiline which you can vary the thickness of to get different kind of thicknesses so once the uh, the chin has been uh, edged up and everything uh, you can see I'm using plastiline around the edge and uh, extending right down to the base so that the entire thing is like a smooth blanket of clay and the only part of the core we can see is the cutting edge around the outside and the keys which we've drilled in to make sure that when the mold is pulled up that they locate correctly when I close the mold and clamp it up tight. Um, I've done the same for the ears as well. The ears are a bit of a, a tricky one because I did something slightly different with those so I am going to do more about the ears on another video because I think they actually deserve um, their own time so I'm going to focus on those in a separate video but uh, basically everything was edged up the same way and then when the face piece was was the first piece I needed to get done really because I needed to get eyebrows punched so there was a bit of a, a time crunch on the, on the face piece so I kind of stopped everything else just to get this face piece molded so I could run one and get that sent away so I, I decided for for budget and time and just to see if I could do it I wanted to make a fiberglass mold of this so I've used a standard polyester gel coat and I backed that up with resin once that had gone off and I made a nice uh, thin fiberglass mold which is very rigid very strong it makes a very very nice mold um, and then once the mold is done we can 
basically drill holes and then bolt it together and the bolts basically act to keep the mold halves in the right place so they're very secure so when you're injecting your silicon in there it absolutely doesn't move and the location of the two halves of the mold remain the same throughout so it's a very um, strong and positive way of keeping the two mold halves together you can see here i've also I've added some wooden handles and that's quite deliberate because it's a very tricky shape to hold because it's quite curved and rounded and everything i thought if i put a couple of handles on the side it gives me something to actually hold on to when i'm assembling the mold and when i'm taking it apart as well once the mold is open, I need to clean the plastiline out. And the way to do that is to use a wooden tongue stick or wooden tool. Something that, if it breaks, it doesn't matter. I wouldn't use a sculpting tool for this. I uh, see that happen a lot. Or people have borrowed my sculpting tools to clean out molds. I need to return them with the tip snapped off because they underestimated uh, how strong the, uh, the, the pull is on, on a mold that's made of fiberglass when you're picking out plastiline. Uh, once you've cleaned out your plastiline... Um, the first thing, well, clean the plastic from the mold. I haven't cleaned anything off of the core yet. Uh, some of it did come off and stick inside the uh, the mold, but whatever remains on the core, here you can actually see some of the cutting edge and some of the sculpt that's still there. You can actually see where the sculpt finish on this edge. Um, what I've done is I've drilled little holes here at various points around the outside of the sculpt, and that, that it's not right on the very, very edge. It's just a little bit in from the edge, about... 10 millimeters half an inch in from the edge of the sculpt and what these are are bleeders they're, they're going to be uh, they're going to permit the air and the silicon to bleed out as i inject this piece because what can happen is being a closed mold as you introduce silicon into it later it's perfectly possible you could trap air bubbles and you won't know until you've waited for your silicon to cure pops it open only to find that there's a, an annoying air bubble caught in an apex somewhere where the air couldn't get out so it's a good idea to put um, the air bubbles um, these air holes to allow them uh, the mold to bleed uh, well, at various intervals you don't do too many if you do too many the silicon will just go everywhere and you'll spend forever plugging up holes and if you don't do enough obviously then it's pointless having any so there's a balance to be struck i kind of done them every sort of two or three inches or so around the outside of the sculpt uh, to sort of illustrate why we do this because it may not be obvious uh, to some people it kind of makes sense if you've never done this before it may seem very difficult but it isn't so i've done some illustrations to try and uh, explain the process uh, as to why that's happened uh, if you can imagine this is the face looking at it from underneath and I'm going to do this illustration over the top to show you um, the outside so here's the mold and the core this is like a cross-section drawing of the mold and the core together and basically what's going to happen is I'm going to rotate this um, 180 degrees so it's upside down because that's the way the mold would be round when I inject it and uh, I'll switch to illustrations here you can see actually what the first thing is that I'm going to do is is drill a hole into the middle of the piece in order to permit me to put a an injection tube in there and the injection tube I've used is brass and I've secured it using car body filler which is um, you know very easily found in car body repair stock shops uh, it's basically a paste you mix together put it on there and it'll set up rigid in about five to ten minutes and it's very good at securing and holding things like this but it's hard enough to be able to drill and sand later I drilled through and then I put a blob of car body filler on the back of that drill hole on the inside and then I left that cure up and then I drilled through again so that I drilled through uh, the car body filler that I just put on there which is now set so I've now got a, a hole that goes all the way through the inside of my core and then once that's on there and that sets up I can then put my syringe in there which I made up out of plastic and the the blue here is going to represent the silicon just because it's an easy color to spot um, here the the blue silicon is is, is poured into the uh, the injection tube and um, basically you just let that I, 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 I say injection I didn't actually use any plunger or anything with it I just let gravity uh, work its magic so gravity pushed that through this is a very large piece of tube full of silicon the silicon the pressure of that silicon then pushes down through the nozzle and into the piece it goes all the way through into the piece and it will gradually fill the inside of the mold and as you can see as the silicon creeps up the sides then the the amount in the syringe goes down so that's how you know it's still flowing into the mold because you'll actually see it start going down in the silicon and then as the silicon feeds up through the inside of the piece you'll see it start eventually to start bleeding out through the 
uh, the bleed holes, which is uh, a good sign because it means the silicon's made it all the way from that initial injection point right to the very edge of the piece. And I tend to let them bleed for a few minutes and then if necessary, I will block them with a little blob of plastiline and let the whole thing set up. And then that way I'm pretty sure that uh, I know the silicon's got to each corner of the sculpt and the fact that it's bleeding through and no air bubbles are coming out is a pretty good indication that the inside is actually going to have filled properly. And I've got a little bit of video there of the of the process happening, of the silicon going in and the, the, uh, the bleed holes working and then you can be reasonably secure. You're not a hundred percent sure but you can be pretty sure that your piece is uh, is going to be successful or at least that the mold will have filled nothing's guaranteed with this stuff you never never know until it's too late whether or not you've got to run another one um that's the fear of, of closed molds which is why i think open molds and flat molds are so popular because you've got much much more successful chance of getting a good piece out so this is what the back of the mold looks like once all the uh the bleed holes are put in and you can see there the uh the brass injection point that's secured with the car body filler. Uh, and for drilling out, I've actually used uh, a little rotary tool here. This one's made by Proxon, but a lot of people use have a Dremel or various other similar types of thing. They're all basically the same thing. The reason I like them more than drills is they typically go down to a much smaller uh, drill bit size. This is a one millimeter drill bit I've used. Um, it's worth having a pack of these because being one millimeter, um, they're quite prone to breaking, especially if you're not careful. So uh, make sure you have enough of these to repair or replace what you may break when you're doing it. Um, but uh, the one mil drill bits I find are just about right to give me enough aperture to let the air out and a little bit of the silicon, but not so much that the silicon gushes out when it reaches it. So here's the front of the core there in the middle of the forehead. You can actually see the hole where I've put my injection point. This is obviously looking at it from the outside and here you can actually see the brass tubing secured from the back there. And that was held in initially with a little bit of super glue just to keep it in place and then I used car body filler around that to make sure it was really really secure and that it's not going to break off whilst I'm putting the syringe in and, and plunging or anything like that. There is another makeup that I did for this um, show which was a much smaller piece uh, and a different kind of mold. This was just a block mold uh, made out of resin. Uh, so I made it like a top lip and a, a nose as a single piece and that sits again on its core um, looks very nice and then I kind of again instead of using a sponge this time I use tissue just to kind of absorb uh, all the excess water and try and get that off before repairing the edge and cleaning that up um, once I've repaired the sculpt and the, the textures right to the edge then I can start preparing for molding um, one thing that does need to be done to this core is I need to actually drill some keys in here. So the, the flattened off eyes that I'd had before, uh, I'm going to use as, as points to put the keys. I'm using a countersink bit in a drill, uh, and this makes a very nice kind of uh, conical indentation in the uh, in the eyes quite nicely. And that works well as a as a temporary sort of key very quickly. I'm going to throw that in there and that will work nicely when I come to pull my mold up. So basically the chin and the other face piece that I made they're both uh, block molds, so they're going to be molded at the same time, the same way. They're basically going to be put uh, on on a, on a bench top, and I, I've done like a clay base around the outside there, and into that I've sunk some brass shim, and brass shim is basically like a thin um, metal uh, sheet that you can buy in a roll, and it's used specifically for the sort of uh, various engineering things, but it's great for um, making temporary walls. So I've basically cut a piece of brass the right size to make a wall around the outside. I've bent it in the right places so that it conforms to the shape of my core. And then I've supported the outside of that with plaster bandage, just to be sure that the brass wall isn't gonna shift or move during the molding process. Once the resin has been put on top of that, um, I've opened up the whole mold and cleaned it up. You can see it's basically a big block of resin now. Uh, they're two different colors because I just I had some from one company and one from another so I I just used up what I had basically but essentially it's the same kind of resin and they both work the same way but uh, it's quite nice because then you can see the the two halves quite quite obviously there uh, and basically when they're popped open which happened very easily fortunately you can see that in this case the sculpt and the the flashing is all stuck inside the mold and it's come away pretty much from the uh, the core leaving it perfectly clean so molding the neck that was pretty much the same as the face um, now that the face had been done i could turn my attention back to the the neck which was uh, desperately needed doing so i've done the same thing i've done flashing around the outside 
and I put these um, bolt holes around the outside edge, which I actually forgot to do on the face piece. I actually drilled through the uh, the edge before and uh, and bolted up, and it did work. But I actually, in my haste to get it done, completely forgot to put these little uh, holes in here, which you can see I've marked with a black dot in the center of each one. And basically, I have a, a, a circular tube. I have some brass tubing, and I use that to cut each one of these out. Uh, again, reasonably equidistant uh, distances around the outside um, and they are basically going to be little touch downs so that when I fiberglass over the top when I drill through the bolt holes will touch down on the core. So once the sculpt is all ready and I've waxed everything I go on my gel coat which is the first layer it's like a kind of a, a thick uh, but runny layer of resin which you paint on the surface and then once that's pretty much set up which takes about half an hour to 45 minutes I then went over the top of that with a couple of thin layers of fiberglass matting uh, and some tissue mat, which is like a really, really fine uh, fiberglass mat over the top. And as you can see, you can still see the, the little black dots through the fiberglass because the resin is, is it has a greeny tinge, but it's reasonably translucent, so you can see through it. Um, and that's helpful to me to be able to see where the bolt holes are. So once everything's completely dry, I let it cure up overnight. The next morning, I cut the edges with a... a, a vibrating saw and drilled all my bolt holes and everything and sanded it and made it all nice and smooth and washed that all off and now the uh, finished mold is ready to open and as you can see where there are sort of pale areas that's where the the mold is, is come away quite easily from the sculpt that should happen everywhere and it's a nice sign when it happens because it means you know the mold is going to open but uh, I've got some video here of me opening this neck piece with a screwdriver I just put a screwdriver in the edge and very carefully twist it slowly and just allow the air to creep inside and you can see as the mold is very easily freeing itself away from the sculpt and from the core it just kind of goes a lot paler suddenly and then when you've done that all the way around you should just be able to pull the two halves apart and here you can see the mold opens and the reason that happens so easily is because I took a fair bit of time to take away all the undercuts by claying out the uh, you know the neck and filling everything out and making sure that the keys are all sort of chamfered and angled so that everything comes apart and goes back together easily i think that's very important if you make the mold easy to use then you won't be cursing every time you uh, you make them uh, around here on the edges you can see I, I, i've drilled my my holes again these are the bleed holes that i was telling you about before um and uh, I've done that before I've cleaned the, the sculpt off, obviously, so that I know where my sculpt is. And one thing I would say, which I didn't mention before, but when you've cleaned your sculpt out, it's worth keeping the plastiline because this volume of plastiline, which is what the sculpt is made up of, is the amount of silicon you're going to need or the minimum amount of silicon you're going to need to fill this mold. So I did the same thing again with the bleed holes. I put uh, the blobs of resin on the back. And in this one, because there was actually quite a bit of silicon and it was going over a very large area, if you think about how big this neck piece is, the silicon that you inject has got to travel quite a distance. Uh, what I actually did was I put um, several uh, holes in there rather than one single one. This is something I learned on Game of Thrones working with the people that uh, ran a lot of the silicons there was, was for bigger pieces, was to drill more than one hole rather than having one big fat hole that you would inject in because obviously when you put an injection hole in a piece and, and run your piece you've got a big sort of nipple like a silicon nipple on the back of that piece so if you've got one big pore hole you will have a big piece to trim away well on this by putting in these uh, seven holes you get a lot of volume through those seven holes but when it comes to pulling the, the, the back piece off and then snipping it to clean it up you're actually only snipping a very very small disc of silicon each time so it actually is easier to kind of keep it neater doing that so I, I, I instead of actually having a syringe as such I've actually just uh, used body filler to attach a piece of tubing which will function as a kind of syringe but it doesn't actually have like a nozzle as such it just fits inside that fiberglass and what I did was I just waxed the end of the tube before I put the, the fiberglass body filler around it let that go off and then pull the tubing out and then basically the tubing will slot back in it's a tight fit but it stays in there and then when I'm done with the core and the mold I can just pop that off and snip my silicon away without it causing any problems and here you can actually see the couple of photographs of the final pouring process so this is the tubing in place I've just mixed up my silicon pour that in gradually let it bleed through uh, and then when all of the um, the, the uh, bleed holes are actually showing silicon running out I can be pretty certain the whole thing is, is, is filled and I'm just going to leave that for about half an hour and then I blocked all the holes and left it overnight.
to open up, which was uh, fortunately a successful cast. We got the first one out and it was absolutely fine. So this wraps up this video because I just wanted to show you how I got to this point. And then the next video I want to concentrate on how the pieces were actually run, how the uh, cores and everything were prepared and the cat plastic was sprayed on and how the silicon was mixed and poured. Um, and we'll focus on those and the ears on the next video. So thanks very much for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next one, which I will put out as soon as possible. Thank you.